might that be, Cherry? Me and my friends decided to camp outside in the backyard. So we needed a tent. Guess what we used to make a tent? Hmm. I'll tell you. My mum's cotton saris. Amazing, isn't it? How did you manage to do that, Cherry? Well, her saris were drying outside. Somehow, they were little firm. So we could twist and fold it any way we liked. So we used it with clamps and wooden planks. Then it became a temporary tent and we enjoyed the camping. Oh, now I get it. You mean the sari was stiff. Your mother must have used starch on it. Starch? What starch, Professor? Well, starch is a type of carbohydrate. And what's that, Professor? Carbohydrate is a food nutrient that helps you work and play hard. It is essential for your growth, Cherry dear. Okay, so you mean this starch or carbohydrate is present in our food? That's correct. Besides starch, we have other essential nutrients like fats and proteins as well. You say they are important for our growth. But how do we know they are present in the food that we eat, Professor? Well, that information should be shared with all. Don't you think, Cherry? Our little friends watching us are curious too. Right, kids? Of course! Welcome, dear friends, to another exciting episode of Science for Juniors. I am Dr. Oxygen and this cute girl next to me is my little assistant, Cherry. We were talking about nutrients present in our food and how we can identify them. Well, get ready for Science for Juniors is ready with answers. All you need is to hop on on this exciting and knowledgeable sci-fi ride. Are you ready, kids? We are ready, Professor! Sugar and starch are the main types of carbohydrates found in our food. Plants are the main sources of carbohydrates. Excess of carbohydrates are stored in our body as fat. With the help of some simple methods, we can test the presence of different nutrients in food items. For carrying out these tests for the presence of carbohydrates, we will need a solution of iodine. We'll also need a few test tubes and a dropper. We can try this test on cooked as well as raw food items. Take a small quantity of a food item or a raw ingredient and put two or three drops of dilute iodine solution on it. Observe if there is any change in the color of the food item. Let it stand for a few minutes. What do we observe? Did it turn blue-black? If yes, then carbohydrate is present in the food item. A blue-black color indicates the presence of carbohydrates in food items. You know kids, some of the common sources of carbohydrates include bread, fruits, sweets, soft drinks, pastas, cereals, potatoes, etc. Potato? But we always say fat potato. My mum says eating too much potato will make me fat. Anything in excess is not good, Cherry dear. We need to balance our diet which includes a right mix of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Fats? Why do we need fats? Well, our body needs fat to absorb different vitamins and to cushion the body against cold and injuries. Fat is like the superhero then, protecting the body from injuries. Right, Professor? You can say that, but too much of it can be unhealthy too. Come, let's see how we can identify presence of fats in our food. Fat is obtained both from plant and animal sources. Milk, cheese, butter are animal sources of fat. Whereas nuts, soya bean, seeds of mustard are plant sources. 
Fats are a rich source of energy and even insulate our body against heat loss. Now you will learn about a test for fats in a food item. Take a small quantity of food item. Wrap it in a piece of paper and crush it. Take care that the paper does not tear. Now straighten the paper and observe it carefully. Does it have an oily patch? To see the oily patch, we need to hold the paper against light and find out if we are able to see the light faintly through this patch. The presence of brown patches will confirm the presence of fat in food. Holy moly, Professor! Every time when I wipe my hands on a tissue after eating a pizza, the paper has a huge brown patch. That's fat, right? Well, cheese is a big source of fat, dear girl. Good fat or bad fat, Professor? Well, if taken in limit, then good, otherwise bad. Hmm. Remember what I mentioned earlier, kids. A balanced diet is what we need. We have already spoken about carbohydrates and fats. Next, we talk about proteins. What does protein do, Professor? It helps build muscles and tissues in our body. Come, let's see how to identify proteins. Proteins are essential for bodybuilding and repairing of worn out tissues. Now it's time to learn about test for proteins. Let's check out how we can test the presence of proteins in food items. Take a little quantity of the food item to be tested. If the food we want to test is a solid, we first need to make a paste of it or powder it. So grind or mash a small quantity of the food item. Put some of the powdered or mashed food item in a clean test tube. Then add about 10 drops of water to the test tube and shake it. Now using a dropper, add a few drops of copper sulphate solution and 10 drops of caustic soda solution to the test tube. Shake the test tube well and let it stand for a few minutes. What do we observe? Did the content of the test tube turn violet? If yes, then proteins are present in the food item. The violet color indicates presence of proteins in the food. So, if my food has carbohydrates, fats and proteins, will I always remain energetic? Kudos! You guessed it right, but in the right proportion. But oh, I almost forgot to mention the other important players. Which other players, Professor? Well, do you know? The other players in a balanced diet include vitamins, minerals, fiber and roughage. There are total 13 vitamins needed by our body, namely vitamin A, D, E and K which are fat-soluble vitamins, whereas vitamin B and C are water-soluble vitamins. These vitamins are important for the normal functioning of the body. Minerals are the nutrients that help in strengthening bones and maintaining normal heartbeat. Fibers are plant products that cannot be absorbed by our body, but they help the digestive system to process food and absorb nutrients. Roughage, on the other hand, is an indigestible food material that does not contain any nutrient but is an important part of food. It helps keep our bowel movement and digestive system normal. I need to tell my mom about all these. I'm sure she already knows, Cherry dear. But there is no harm in just running through a quick recap to refresh our minds. Let's summarize what we have learnt. Take a food item that is to be tested. Add 2 or 3 drops of dilute iodine solution to it. 
If the color of the item changes to blue-black, it will confirm the presence of starch in that food. Press any food item on a paper and observe it against light. Brown oily patches denote presence of fat in the food item. Take powdered food item in a test tube, add water and shake it well. Add 2 drops of copper sulphate solution and 10 drops of caustic soda solution. If the solution turns violet, presence of protein would be confirmed. Potato for starch, cheese for fat. And what about protein, Professor? Meat, egg, fish, dals to mention a few, dear girl. Got it, Professor. Excellent. So kids, that's all we have today on Science for Juniors. But we will be back again, same time, same place, with another interesting sci-fi ride for you to enjoy. Till then, stay curious and eat healthy.